hello again and thank you for watching the reason I I'm having a separate video for these operations or for these functions in OCaml list is because of the um, the last video was quite too long I think it we exceeded uh, 10 minutes and these functions are very important and I want you to pay attention and understand them to the understand them to the best of your ability if you are taking notes then please write down uh, whatever I'm going to say or you can watch the video again and again just to understand these are very useful functions you will find them in any data structure that you use maybe in, in OCaml the data structures coming through the OCaml system you will love them and as I said if you understand them for lists then you should be able to use them for other data structures and therefore I'm not going to repeat explaining them uh, for other data structures that I cover in my upcoming videos now let's go to the OCaml system to the uh, index of modules to the list module and go to iterators now we have several functions iterate iterate I map map I reverse map fold left and fold right these are very powerful functions I uh, will come to them in a minute now the first one is list dot iterate what it does is it applies a function to every element of the given list and that's it so as you can see here list dot iterate f is a function and this is an input list and this what this means is that f will be applied to the first element to the second element third element until the last element of the list this is equ this is equivalent to f of a1 f of a2 f of a n and a1 a2 a n are the elements of the list enough talking let's have a look at how this works let's go to our top loop um, have a list maybe a list called equals uh, let's say UK a list of strings this time that's where I live I live in London Libya that's where I'm from um, maybe uh, Italy I don't know why I thought of Italy and let's say for example um, um, uh, Egypt yes and then what we can do is now we can do a list dot iterate and then have a function that we can, we can apply in that let's have let's for example have an anonymous function so fun x x now is the input ie each element of the input list one at a time and let's for example compute the length of every string let for example l equals uh, string dot length from module string there's a function called length computes the length of a string in and maybe we can print int l um, and then maybe print new line there's a function called print new line to print the new line and then we can close the anonymous function and pass the list as our input as you can see now it prints out the length of every string 255 uh, yes that's 2555 five. now notice what I've done here I have a, an anonymous function find x x now will be each of these one at a time and then with that arrow now I apply anything I want on the X I just because X is a string I compute the length of X uh, save it in a and then print out a and then print a new line so I can have them in separate lines and then close the anonymous function that I close it here and then pass I close it here and pass the LS as the second argument of the function iterate you notice here that iterate it only applies the function it it doesn't return anything basically it returns a unit as you can see here unit so it doesn't re return anything we have another function called iterate i it's the same as iterate but the function is applied to the index of the element as the first argument starting from zero and the element itself as the second argument so we have the index and the element itself list dot iterate i and then we can have function of two arguments now the first one is the index and the second one is the element itself and we can do anything so now i is um, i is into maybe I can print print int i print string x and then ls and this will print index and the element itself This expression expects too many arguments. Print int i print string x. But it should have type 
unit. Let's have a second look at why this is complaining. Oh yes, I didn't say iterate i. That's why it's complaining. I'm using iterate. This is absolutely correct. And as you can see now it says 0 UK, 1 Libya. I just didn't insert any spaces. You can do that if you want. But just to demonstrate how, how this works, 0 UK, 1 Libya, 2 Italy, 3, three Egypt. So iterate i, the, it, 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 the function needed there uh, receives two arguments. The first one is the index of the element and the second one is the index itself. Again, it doesn't return anything. The map, however, is similar to the iterate. It applies a function to each element and returns a new list. Yes, it returns a new list. The map returns a new list with the results now. So, for example, here, instead of printing out, we can have these inside the results using the map. So, we can say list.map, and then we can have anonymous function. So, what I'm saying here is fun x, let l equals string.length x in l. So, I'm returning l now, and then I can pass it ls. And as you can see, I have a list now of the... Uh, of, of the results. So map returns a list whereas iterate does not return a list, it just applies the function. Whereas map applies the function and returns a list uh, of results. I mean, uh, we, could, we could have said just fun x and then string.length x and then ls and it should return the same thing without having to store it in a uh, temporary variable l. Likewise, map i, the same concept, but now we have two variables just like we did for the iterate. And again, it returns a list, so I can say list dot map i, and then I have an anonymous function. I can have, by the way, for the anonymous function, you can declare another function somewhere and then use it instead of the anonymous function. Function of i and x, and then we can just, for example, say maybe return i, and then pass ls, and it will return just indices, or maybe I can return x, or do anything and return a value, and that will be stored in a list. The result of applying this function on each element uh, individually and the result will be if each each result of that will be an element of the new list sorry to confuse you and then reverse map gives the same result as list dot reverse list dot map f of l so basically what we do is we call the map function and then we reverse the result fold left and fold right this is extremely important extremely powerful please pay attention and listen carefully the fold left function as you can see here uh, there's no explanation, but what it does is we pass it. Look here, we this dot fold. We pass it a function f. We pass it a parameter a, and we pass it a list. And what it does is the fir the function will be applied to the first element of the list with that parameter, and then the result of that will be passed. The result of that will be an argument to the next run of the function which is run on the second element of the list and the result of that will be passed as a parameter or as an argument to the third run of the function on the third element of the list and so on and so forth. If you focus here we have if of a and b1 then that will come now instead of a for the second element so we have f of this value of b2 and that will be the same thing for f3. Let's have a look just to demonstrate how this actually uh, works. Yeah, I have a simple example here. Notice here now, list.fold left, and I have a function of x and y. What I do here is I add x and y. The reason I have two elements for the anonymous function is because, the, as we said before, for the fold left, we have this, we have this uh, uh, parameter here, this variable here. So the function needs two variables, this and an element of the list. That's why I have x and y. So x now is the zero and y is every one of these or every element of these guys and the way this is going to work is as follows in the beginning it will be zero and one uh, which is one after that that will that one will now come instead of the zero and it will be passed to the three so it'll be function of one and three one plus three is four and that four will come instead of that for the five will be x and y will be, four, will be 4 and 5 now, so 5 plus 4 is 9, and then that 9 will come to play when we reach the 7, it will be x and y will be 9 and 7, and the result should be 16. And fold left means we move from left to right. We iterate, we go through the elements from left to right, as if you see here, the result is 
16. I hope this makes sense. This is very important. And notice, by the way, the result is actually accumulating in the and in the explanation. If you go to the fold right, it says non tail recursive. So it's a recursive function, but it's not tail recursive. Fold right, however, if you notice now the order of the arguments is we have the function function f, and then the list, and then the element b. And the way this works is as follows. Um, we have the function of a and of, of the function of the first element of the list. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We start now from the right, by the way. We start from the right and go left. Yes, we start from the right and go left. So a n now is the last element of the list. We apply it, we apply the function on the last element of the list and the b that we pass the, par the parameter, it's equivalent to a here, but now b is after the list, not before the list. And then the result of that will be passed to the function when we apply it on a n minus 1 and then the process continues from right to left. Let's have an example now. Let me just copy and paste this quickly. And it's uh, now fold right and then this needs to go where there. As we said here the syntax is that element is actually after the list. So it'll be now uh, 0 and 7, the result of that will be passed to the 5 uh, 7 plus 5, the result of that will be passed to the 3 7 plus 5 is 12 12 plus 3 is 15 and the result will be 16 Let's have a look, copy and paste that, fold right and the result will be the exactly the same um, I don't know whether the result will be exactly the same in all cases because in your functions you may have strings or floating numbers or, or you may have other functions I'm just trying to demonstrate how this works here by using the zero and then accumulating the result as you have seen I hope this is making sense these are extremely important functions if you get the idea here then you should be you should be quite comfortable with data structures in OCaml in general thank you very much for watching again and I'll see you next time